Stay tuned for Captain Tracy Began of the Living Beyond Pain podcast, produced by the Defense Health Agency. Welcome to the Living Beyond Pain podcast. This is a series devoted to helping people struggling with chronic pain by giving them practical tools to help them manage the intensity, the frequency, and the duration of their pain flare-ups. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what exactly chronic pain is and how it impacts different areas of our lives. And I want to introduce my special guest, Dr. Diane Flynn. She's a pain expert here at the Madigan Army Medical Center. Welcome, Dr. Flynn. Hi, Tracy. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience working with pain? Oh, yes. I'm a uh, family physician, and I also work at Madigan Army Medical Center, and I work in the Interdisciplinary Pain Management Center at Madigan, uh, and I've worked there since uh, 2010 now. So you have a pretty extensive background in treating patients with pain. Yes, and prior to working in the Interdisciplinary Pain Management Center at Madigan, uh, I'm a family physician, so I worked in primary care for about 20 years prior to that. So can you tell our audience a little bit about what chronic pain is? The short answer is it's generally accepted that chronic pain is defined as pain that lasts longer than about 12 weeks or three months. Um, The longer way to answer that question is to talk a little bit about the difference between acute pain, which is pain that occurs in response to an injury, and chronic pain. So acute pain is your body's response to injury, and it's a protective characteristic. When you touch a hot pan, for example, on a, on a hot stove, your body's natural tendency is to pull away from that burn, and that discomfort, the pain that you have at the site of the burn, is your body's way of giving you a chance to heal. It's, it's, it's letting you know, keep that limb or that finger or hand protected while the body can heal. Chronic pain, on the other hand, is pain that in many cases persists after the acute injury is healed. And unlike acute pain, which serves a purpose, chronic pain really has no purpose. And in many cases, the chronic pain leads to harms such as decreased function, decreased ability to sleep, and decreased ability to really enjoy life. So chronic pain is really not very helpful, and it kind of tricks our minds and our body into thinking that there's still harm and injury out there when in reality that chronic pain is actually keeping them from engaging in important areas of their life. Absolutely. Yes, it's not uncommon um, when someone has experienced chronic pain for months, sometimes years, sometimes even decades, for them to be fearful of physical activities. They may feel like if they you know, went for a walk, they would re-injure their sore back or their sore knee or hip, whereas physical activity is actually helpful for most pain conditions to help the body be as strong uh, and flexible as possible. So we know pain really impacts our physical abilities and, and to engage in enjoyable activities or exercise or even just daily activities like getting out of bed or going to the grocery store. Can you tell us a little bit more about other areas in someone's life that pain could impact them? Many people, I think, believe that pain is just a physical symptom. It's the discomfort. But chronic pain really affects many aspects of an individual's life in many cases. Pain can be associated with depression, for example, anxiety, problems with sleep, problems with worrying, worrying that the pain won't won't get better or the pain could get worse. Uh, So it really um, affects multiple domains of someone's life. I've also seen that with the patients I work with. And I think what particularly stands out to me is that having chronic pain can feel very isolating and people withdraw socially And then, like you said, the anxiety and the depression. So that really four-pronged approach of you're looking at the physical impact, the emotional impact, how it's impacting the way they think about their situation, and then also their social interaction, which can really lead to a vicious cycle. Absolutely, yes. Now, if someone out there is listening and they're experiencing chronic pain and they might feel, you know, frustrated with their current treatment plan, or they don't even know where to start to address those different areas, what recommendations would you have as far as effective treatments for pain? Yeah, that's a great question. 
the best way to treat chronic pain is with an interdisciplinary approach. And, and what that means simply is it's bringing together medical professionals from many different disciplines, each having their own perspective on the best way to treat pain and coming up with a comprehensive plan that includes um, aspects of all of their, uh, their medical disciplines. So, for example, at Madigan and at every Army Medical Center, we all have an interdisciplinary pain management center. And at each of these centers, uh, we have conventional medical care providers. So we have physicians and physical therapists and occupational therapists and health psychologists, nurses. But in addition, we have practitioners of complementary and integrative therapies, such as chiropractic, acupuncture, yoga, and massage. And our team comes together to develop a treatment plan for each patient that we see in our centers and, and meet regularly to discuss how each individual is responding to the therapeutic approach. And in so doing, we really feel that we bring the best of all of those disciplines together to accomplish the best outcomes for each individual who engages in them. So it sounds like the experts have come together and really decided that a team approach is the best way. So you have the medical professionals to address the physiological needs or, you know, the body's needs to treat the pain. That could include medications, physical therapy. Then you have the behavioral health piece to really work on coping skills, stress management, and then also looking at some of the great resources we have with yoga, with some of the complementary services. And I think there's been some research on acupuncture as well. So it sounds like really that team approach has been determined to be the best way to treat pain. Yes, I agree. And you mentioned medications as well. We also have a pharmacist on our team to help patients understand the um, benefits and side effects of the medications that they may have uh, been on. So one of the, the ways I try to explain that team approach to my patients is if you had a, f a car with four flat tires, you wouldn't only want to fix one of the flat tires because the other three are still going to keep that car from moving forward effectively and, and running at an optimal level. So that's kind of that team approach that we have with pain management. Is that accurate? Yeah, I think that's a great analogy. What would be some resources that you could recommend for folks that are listening and maybe, maybe they're a little skeptical about you know, engaging with their primary care provider or maybe they're not sure? What are some resources that we could give them uh, to give them some more information or maybe get them connected with some of these resources? Well, there are resources available at, at the website here uh, that, that uh, would be a good place to start. I would also recommend that uh, individuals with chronic pain who, who are interested in a more uh, interdisciplinary approach uh, visit their primary care providers. Their primary care provider can do a thorough assessment of their pain, of the, the cause of their pain, and the and the underlying uh, manifestation of their pain, and then determine uh, which of the approaches um, would be the best approach uh, to, to help manage their pain. And, and, and I also want to say uh, there's a huge component of what we call self-management. So these are resources that any individual can do on their own at home, e either between medical visits or after they've had medical care and are discharged from uh, from care for a particular condition. These are tools in their toolbox that they can carry with them uh, in the future. And many of these resources are available in the show notes. I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us about your experience in treating chronic pain and um, giving us some, some educational information. And I hope the takeaway here is that, yes, you have chronic pain, but it doesn't have to control your life. And we're really hoping through this series that you can get some tools that'll help you manage your pain and help you live beyond your pain. And again, we're not looking to eliminate your pain. We're looking to give you some new coping skills, maybe some new um, perspective on how you can manage and continue to have 
opportunities and a quality of life where the intensity, the frequency, and the duration of your pain flare-ups are not going to have as much control as they've had in the past. Again, we're not looking to, to take away all your pain. I wish we could. That would be wonderful, but there's no magic cure for that. But these are some practical resources and practical tools that folks can use in their daily lives. So thank you again so much for your time, Dr. Flynn. And thank you for listening. We'll hope you stay tuned for our next episode as we discuss breaking through the vicious cycle of chronic pain. We look forward to helping you take back control of your life and living beyond your pain. Until next time, be well and know you're not alone in your battle to manage your chronic pain. The Living Beyond Pain podcast is produced by the Defense Health Agency. Until next time, be well. Thank you.